Hello, welcome to the Simutrain FEA Tips and Tricks series brought to you by Simutech Group. This video will examine the new contact step control feature introduced with the R19 release of ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. The contact step control tool makes it possible to activate or deactivate specific contact pairs for a given load step. To demonstrate this, we are going to use this model of a simple U-bracket consisting of three separate bodies, where the connecting side plate is perpendicular to both the top and bottom parallel plates. In this example scenario, we will apply a 10 mm displacement to this surface of the top plate in the negative Y, or downward, direction. However, when the displacement reaches 5 mm, we will use the contact step control tool to change the contact behavior here between the side plate and bottom plate from frictionless to bonded. Let's go over the setup. Three contact regions have been defined. We have created one bonded contact pair here where the side plate meets the top plate and two different contact pairs here where the side plate meets the bottom plate. The first of these two is frictionless, reflecting the first desired contact behavior, and the second is bonded, reflecting the subsequent contact behavior. For this simple simulation, the mesh has been generated using default ANSYS mechanical settings. For analyses involving more complex contact step control applications, a finer and more customized mesh would most likely be necessary. If we look at the Analysis Settings Details window, we can see this simulation has been broken into two load steps. Auto time stepping is turned off and the number of sub-steps has been set to 10. It should be noted that these settings have been chosen not to help achieve convergence, but rather to allow better visualization of the results. If the default settings are used for this simulation, ANSYS Mechanical arrives at the solution using only one step per load step, but with these settings, we will have 20 discrete steps to observe as opposed to only two. Fixed supports were applied to the ends of the top and bottom plates here and here, opposite the side plate. This support scheme effectively cantilevers the U-bracket. A 10 mm remote displacement has been scoped here to this surface of the top plate. If we look over here in the tabular data window, we can see that the first 5 mm of this negative Y displacement has been assigned to the first load step, while the remainder has been assigned to the second. Remember, for this simulation, we want the contact behavior between the side and bottom plates to change from frictionless to bonded when the remote displacement reaches 5 mm. This event now coincides with the end of the first load step. To do this, we will need to insert two contact step controls into the analysis. If we look at the details of this first contact step control, we see it is scoped to the frictionless contact defined between the side and bottom plates. Down here under the step control section, we have the current step and status fields. The status field can be switched to either dead or alive. The number entered in the current step field indicates the load step to which the selected status will be applied. For instance, for load step 1, we want the status of the scoped contact to be set to alive. If we change the current load step to 2, we can set the status of the scoped contact to be dead. Looking at the second contact step control, we see it is scoped to the bonded contact defined between the side and bottom plates. We want this contact to be acknowledged by the solver while the frictionless contact is being ignored and vice versa. Down here in the graph window, we can see that the contact status has been set to dead for the first load step and changed to alive for the second load step, opposite that of the frictionless contact pair. For both contact step controls, we have left the options under the definition section to just be the default settings. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this model. First, let's take a look at a total deformation plot at our last time point to see if the model is behaving as expected. 
The bracket shows zero displacement on the far end of the top and bottom plates where we set fixed supports, and this contact interface has moved away from the bottom plate edge where it was originally, indicating the presence of some sliding during the solution. If we animate the deformation plot, it becomes clear that the contact step controls have resulted in the desired contact behavior. During the first load step, when the frictionless contact is alive, the side plate presses down on and displaces the bottom plate, but is free to slide across its surface. As soon as the second load step begins, the contact type switches to bonded and the side plate can no longer slide as it continues to displace the bottom plate. If we insert a contact tool and scope a status result to the side plate contact surface, we can see that the surface indeed switches from a state of sliding to sticking at the completion of the first load step. Finally, if we look at the stress result, we can observe how the change in contact type induces a change in stress generation within the lower plate. Whereas stress is initially concentrated in the bottom plate near the fixed end, stress begins to propagate near the side plate once the contact type switches to bonded. The contact step control tool is a strong addition to ANSYS Workbench Mechanical, which provides analysts new levels of versatility and control. Thank you for watching this Simutrain FEA Tips and Tricks video brought to you by Simutech Group.